let people know that it's there. Um, because, like, they don't know yet that it was, you know, hanging from a thread and that it was almost eradicated, right? So, uh, you know, p- p- making sure that they have that knowledge early on will probably go a long way in making sure that it stays around for at least a few more generations anyway. And uh, when I was a kid, um, you know, we didn't, like, the, the older generation, like, the elders spoke it amongst themselves, but they didn't speak it that much to us. And, uh, I, and I guess that was the byproduct of colonialism and assimilation, right? They, they were just, you know, led to believe that it was a dying language and a dying way of life and that it'd be futile to, you know, try to keep it going with the younger generation. But I think in the 80s is when a cultural renaissance really happened in my community anyway. Mm-hmm. And uh, by the time I reached grade one, uh, my community was able to expand its elementary school from just kindergarten and it, all the way up until grade eight. So when they did that expansion, they ensured that there would be a, a language program as part of the curriculum. So um, kids my age were lucky enough to learn it in school. Uh, like there wasn't immersion or anything. It was just a, a period a day. But, you know, it was still a lot more than I think was available to the generation prior. Oh, I think social media is a big uh a big platform. It's it's encouraging because I see a lot of younger people from my my community, like my younger cousins and their friends. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll send the post messages on each other's Facebook walls in in the language. You know, um, whether it be like funny inside jokes or just uh, you know just just little passages here and there, little phrases, and uh, it's you know it's. Like, they, they, they think it's cool, which is really awesome because, you know, when, when we were younger, we didn't necessarily think the language was cool, right? But um, for them, it's like, a, it's like a new gift, like a new toy. It's a way for them to communicate with themselves. Uh, it's a unique way. It's a unique, exclusive way to, with the, for them to communicate with each other. And uh, it, it's pretty cool to see because, yeah, they use it on Facebook and Twitter and, um, you know, by and large, it's communication, right? Um, and they're embracing these new tools, and they're making sure they use use those tools to preserve the language, which is, which is pretty awesome to see. Um, I guess the identity, I mean, the language, it means, for me, it's, it's, the, it's connection to my ancestors. Uh, it's the connection to a way of life that is gone, but it's also um, a connection to a more hybrid way of life in the future that uh, acknowledges and respects those traditional ways um, that were hanging by a thread, that were almost eradicated um, officially by the, you know, by the governments of Canada and the United States, right? Uh, so. The fact that it still exists is a point of pride for me. Uh, the fact that I'm able to know words and phrases and sentences and can carry on basic discussions with, with some people uh, is something that I'm really proud of. So the language itself is, yeah, it's, I guess to sum it up, is uh, it, it means identity, but it also means pride, and it also means promise in terms of making sure that the culture stays alive uh, because it wasn't supposed to. And uh, here it is. We have new generation of people who are proud of it, who want to make sure that it stays alive in a lot of different ways.